What is going on everyone? Welcome to the video. So if you just saw what I put in front of you, that was the new candy bar flavor Halo Top. I'm going to let you guys know what I think of it. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to take you through my latest deadlift workout. And this is my second week on my new routine. The last video I kind of discussed how I was setting up my main exercises. This video I'm going to discuss how I select my accessory exercises and the rep range for that. So enjoy the workout and then stick around for the end of the video where I will try this candy bar halo top and let you guys know what I think. What is going on everyone? Welcome to the workout footage. So I figured it'd be a nice compromise. Some people were angry with all the halo top talk some people actually enjoy the halo top stuff so i figured i'll tease you guys in the beginning and then save it for the end so if you want to see what i think of candy bar halo top wait till the end if you really don't care you're just watching for the workout well here's the workout so here is my latest deadlift workout if you saw the first workout that i put up on my new routine that was a bench workout and i said how now i am doing the same amount of reps on each set it's five sets uh, I, I told you guys it was one to three reps. So last week I was doing five sets of three. This week I am doing five sets of two. So the two is heavier, a little bit heavier than the three. Again, I don't want to give the percentages yet because they might change. Um, when I have everything I set in stone, I'll let you guys know what the percentages are. So if you want to copy me, you can go ahead. But for right now, I don't really want anyone trying to copy what I'm doing since I don't even know exactly what I'm doing myself. Um, so yeah, I don't want to talk any more about the main lift other than saying on 5 through 1 since all the sets are always like changing, you're changing the weights on each set. It kind of feels weird in between sets when I put the weight down and I don't have to change the weight again. Like I'm just leaving it there for the next set. It's like I don't know what to do during like my rest time. It's like what do I do with my hands? Like I don't know what to do. So it's kind of weird not changing the weight. And this week it happened to be 400 pounds. For those of you who are familiar with plate math, that's five pounds short of four plates. So if you see the plates at the end, it's like a combination of every single plate besides a 45 after, which I always believe in sticking to the program. So if the program says 400 pounds, I do 400 pounds, even though 405 wouldn't have felt much different. It would have been a lot easier. I always stick with it. I don't like to start rounding. Um, so as far as the accessories, uh, first, I'll say what I used to do. So what I used to do, if you guys were familiar, I like to vary my rep ranges. So I would have one week where I did six to eight reps on my accessories. I would have another where I did eight to 10, one where I did 10 to 12, and one where I did 12 to 15. Because I do think that by varying the rep ranges, you do get the most out of your workouts. I think it's important um, to make sure you're lifting in different rep ranges, to make sure you're hitting every type of muscle fiber um and just I, I always find that to be the most effective um so i'm not i am still doing some variation on the rep ranges but i'm changing it up just a little bit um, but before we do that let me just say how i select my accessory exercises so the actual exercises that i am doing they aren't really for the most part they're pretty much the same as the ones i was doing before because I always believe in choosing accessories that are pretty much compound exercises that really give you the most bang for your buck. So what I mean by that is here you see the first one, hack squats. Hack squats are a great exercise. I feel them a lot. I don't really feel the need to change them up. Um, you'll see, on my squat days, I've been doing Romanian deadlifts. In my opinion, Romanian deadlifts are the most effective hamstring exercise. They don't become less effective because you've been doing them for a long time. Uh, maybe you could switch from dumbbells to barbells, but just because you've been doing it for a long time, it doesn't make sense to start doing like leg curls instead of Romanian deadlifts because Romanian deadlifts are always going to be superior to leg curls, and th that's just how I feel about it. So I wouldn't switch out the, the I wouldn't switch out the best exercise for a body part just because I've been doing it for a while. That doesn't make sense. Um, but let me get to the rep ranges now. So. Rather than switch the, rather than completely vary the rep ranges, what I'm doing now is after my main lift, I have one main accessory exercise. This is on this particular workout. It is hack squats, and what I do is I'm doing either four or five sets. And well, let me go back a step. So I actually got rid of I got rid of the six the six to eight reps completely as an accessory. But what I'm doing, I take the first accessory exercise, which is this, and the first two sets, I either do um, two sets of six or two sets of eight, 
depending on the week. So the first, this was two sets of six. And then after I do those first two sets of six, I drop the weight and I do either two sets of 12 or two sets of 15. So basically what I did on that main accessory exercise, I combined the six to eight reps and the 12 to 15 rep range that I was doing. And I pretty much put it all together in, in one week. Uh, just because I felt like six reps was too low on a lot of these like isolation type exercises. And I felt like there was no point in doing just six reps. So I felt like two sets of six, uh, you still get the benefit of the heavy weight. But then you also get the benefit of the volume by doing the 15 after. So on this week, I was doing, I was pairing six with 15. So I did two sets of six, two sets of 15. And then you see after my set, my last set of 15, I do a drop set where I pause at the bottom. And I just find that effective. So pretty much I do that on one accessory each workout and I choose one there's one lift that I basically choose on every, on every day that is going to be my what I consider my main accessory. And on that main accessory, like I said, I either do two sets of six or two sets of eight followed by two sets of 12 or two sets of 15, depending on the week. And you'll see that later on in my other workouts. Uh, after that main accessory though, I still continue to vary the rep ranges only without six to eight. So what I do is after those, I do eight to 10, I have a 10 to 12, and I have a 12 to 15. So Overall, it's not that different than what I had been doing in the past. Uh, it's a little bit different, but I guess overall not, not that different because I, I did like my last routine. I'm not going to start suddenly changing everything. I really just wanted to make uh, I just really need to make slight tweaks and adjustments where I felt it was lagging or what it was just nagging me, and that's what I've done. So I'll continue to discuss this more in the future. For now, the workout footage is wrapping up. Uh, if you do want to see what I think of the candy bar halo top, that will be the last clip of the video to wrap it up. So stick around for that. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoy the video. I do appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching so far, and I will see you guys in the next clip. All right, guys. So the workout footage is complete, and this is what the candy bar looks like. This was honestly the one I was most excited about to try. I tried the pumpkin first because I only have one of these. I had three of those, but the pumpkin was pleasantly surprising. I don't know what candy is even in here, so I am going to try it for you guys now and see. All right. I like it. Let me try it again. So it's definitely creamy. I taste some peanut butter. There's definitely chunks of some candy. And I definitely approve, but funny, even though pumpkin isn't like my favorite flavor overall, I actually like the pumpkin better than this, but this is also a solid flavor as well. Um, I heard the other day on the radio, I don't know if it's true or not, that Halo Top is the number one pint of ice cream being sold in the United States now. I find it pretty amazing that a diet ice cream could be ahead of like Ben and Jerry's and like Haagen Dazs. So I guess it's good that the health thing is kind of spreading. I mean, Halo Top definitely doesn't taste like Ben and Jerry's, but for what you're getting and for the taste, I definitely think the slight trade-off in taste is worth the huge savings in calories. And what's also good is there's so many companies now that are doing the same thing. Like there's Enlightened, there's, there's a bunch of them that are trying to make this diet ice cream. So I think ever since that happened, Halo Top stepped up their game and they changed the formula and it's better than it was. So the more that these ice creams come out, the better Halo Top gets. They have a bunch of new flavors now. This one's good. Pumpkin was amazing. And I'm going to finish this and enjoy. So if you guys like the video, hit the thumbs up. It does help me out a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Let me know in the comments if you want, what you want me to discuss um, in future videos. And I will see you guys in the next video.